Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. From today onward, I am going to take a few lectures on the topic of mycology. So this is uh, this lecture is mainly um, on the introduction of mycology, the um, investigations and how to diagnose and classify different fungal in uh, different fungi. Along with that, I will also be discussing the antifungal medications. So in the subsequent lecture, I will be discussing the dermatophyte infections and defungal infections. So let's proceed uh, for the today's lecture. Definition, mycology is the study of fungi. The diseases they cause are called as mycosis. Fungi are saprophytic or parasitic. These are microorganisms that are distinct from plants as well as animals. So they are classified separately as fungi. Importance of fungi. Fungi are abundant in human environment. They are common cause of damage to crops, foodstuff, fabric, and building materials. Fungal diseases are primary infections, but they may also be caused by eating foodstuff contaminated by fungal toxins, which are called as the mycotoxins. Fungi do not rank with protozoa, helminth, virus, or bacteria. They may be very common, but they seldom kill. They do not cause widespread or dangerous epidemics. They can nevertheless be a cause of major distress or disability. Fungi of medical importance, especially in tropical countries. There are more than 50,000 species of fungi that are described. And they are classified into several major classes according to their cellular organization and way they reproduce. The principal mycosis affecting man can be distinguished by the site of body that is affected. And each type has a different pattern of uh, disease characteristics. Importance of fungi. In 1975 and 76, WHO acknowledged that mycosis are serious medical and social problem throughout the world and they are a public problem. The widest range of fungal infections and the most serious are to be found in tropical and developing countries. Molds and yeasts. So there are two types of fungal infections, molds and yeast. Most fungi consist of microscopic branching filaments, which are called as hyphae. These are normally divided into cells by cross walls, which are known as septa. A visible mass of interwoven hyphae is called as a mycelium. So please note down all these important terminologies. Hyphae, septa, mycelium. So these are septate hyphae in which these branching hyphae are divided by septas into individual cells. And this is an example of a septate hyphae. There is no division. Fungi, which reproduce by budding, are generally referred to as yeasts. Hyphae are absent or represented only by pseudohyphae, which are elongated budding cells, often linked in branching chain, which superficially resemble hyphae. So the pseudohyphae, like these, are seen in yeasts, while the septate hyphaes are seen in molds. So Canida septicum is a yeast, and it is characterized by uh, elongated budding um, uh, filaments, which are non-septate hyphae. Unlike bacterial colonies, Fungal colonies spread radially by their hyphae, continually extending, and the peripheral hyphae producing branching growth. That is why the fungi spread in annular fashion. 
the rate of growth, <coughs> texture, color, and form of colony is distinct for each species, and these characteristics are therefore important in cultural identification of different type of fungi of medical importance. So the fungal classification, basic morphological and clinical classification of medically important fungi is in molds and in yeasts. So molds again are classified into those molds which produce a septate hyphae and those which produce septate hyphae. And yeasts are those without pseudo hyphae and those with pseudo hyphae. So this is a broad morphological classification. Diamorphism. The term diamorphism is used to describe a fungus which occur in two different forms. Some pathogenic fungi are filamentous, that is mycelial in culture, and yeast-like in infected tissue. So they change their forms. So uh, the classification of yeast is those yeast which produce pseudohyphae and those that which do not produce pseudohyphae. So those which produce pseudohyphae include cutaneous and systemic candida, candida infection. And those yeast which do not produce uh, pseudohyphae, they include systemic cryptococcus pneumoniae. Now molds. Those molds which produce aseptate hyphae, they are uh, subcutaneous and systemic. So the subcutaneous molds include Bestido bolus, uh, Conidio bolus, Rhinosporidium, and systemic infections include Rhizopus, Absidia, and Mucormycosis. This is the most common. Uh, fungal infection of this group. Then molds that produce septate hyphae. So among them, there are again two classifications, those who are monomorphic, that they retain their mold um, morphology, whether in culture, whether inside the body, or diamorphic. So the monomorphic molds, they include the superficial, all the superficial fungal infections or the dermatophytes, Mycosporum, trichophyton, epidermophyton, etc. And the subcutaneous fungal infections like um, Philophora, uh, Clenidosporium, uh, Petrilidium, Leptospheria, etc. The diamorphic uh, molds with septate hyphae, they behave as uh, molds in the culture and behave as yeast in the body. So they include histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, uh, paracoxidididomycosis, melisesia furfur. So all these, they are diamorphic fungi. So these are the, the PS positive septate hyphae, commonly seen in all the dermatophyte infections. Septate hyphae. These are again pseudohyphes along with budding cells, Canada albicans, pseudohyphes and budding as well. So you can see these elongated budding cells, which are <coughs> aseptate hyphae. This is PS positive. A septate hyphae from the nail, nail genital infection. Spore formation. Most fungi reproduce by forming spores. The spores may be produced in many different ways, and their size, shape, color, and manner of production are value in identifying individual species. Type of reproduction in a fungi. Fungi may have a sexual or perfect stage. This is called as telomorph. Many of the common pathogenic species produce asexual multiplication or reproduction, which is called as imperfect stage or anamorph. 
if both uh, telomorph and anamorph stages are present, then these fungi will be labeled as the holomorph. Telomorph, anamorph, and holomorph. The sexual uh, reproduction. It is seen in following types of fungi. Zygomycetes. Zygomycetes are uh, mycelia producing aseptate hyphae, for example, mucormycosis and rhizopus. Then ascomycetes. They form septate hyphae, uh, forms ascus containing esc eight ascospores like atroderm, or arthroderm. Then basidiomycetes. These are large fruiting bodies, mushrooms, and toadstools. The imperfect stage of spores, which are the more common way in which the fungi multiply, that is asexual reproduction, they, these kind of spores are divided into five different types. Chlamydiospores, arthrospore, blastospore, sporangiospore and conidium. So we are going to discuss each and every type one by one. So the first is the chlamydiospore. The chlamydiospore is a resting stage formed when a cell swell up and develop a thick resistant form. This is a chlamydiospore. So you can see this chlamydiospore in histology specimen in uh, idiosporomycosis of lung. Second way to form an asexual spore formation or imperfect reproduction is arthrospore. In this, spores are formed by separation, um, separation followed by fragmentation of the septas. So different septas are transformed into individual spores. So this is a common form of asexual reproduction and is called as arthrospores. So here you can see the arthrospores formation in um, cutaneous fungal infection. Trichosporum catenium uh, forming arthrospores. Each individual septas are divided into are uh, divided into different spores. Then comes the blastospores, the single vegetative cell of a yeast that produce by budding. So this is how the yeasts multiply. That is by budding, and the budding is called as the blastospores. So this is budding of an yeast, paracoxidomycosis, occurring in the body. Then the fourth form is the sporangiospore. This is a spore which is produced within a swollen spherical cell or a sporangium at the end of a specialized hyphae that is called as the sporangiophore. This is a sporangiophore or sporangium in rhinosporidiosis nasal polyp. Now the last type or four fifth type of asexual spore formation is by conidium. Conidium is a spore produced externally. You can see this conodi, these conidiums produced externally on a specialized hyphae that is called as the conidiophore. This is a conidium on conidiophore. It is macro or microconidia, the macroconidia. They are elongated, spherical, club shaped or racket shaped or cylindrical structures at the tip of a branching hyphae. You can see these racket shaped structure and club shaped structures. They are detached when they get matured. The shape and sizes of conidia and the way in which they are formed are variable and a great value in identifying individual fungi. So these are the macroconidia. 
Microconidia. These are small, round, oval, or elongated spores arising from the end or sides of hyphae. They are often seen in clusters like the bunch of grapes. They are found in several species, especially Trichophyton mentagrophyte, Trichophyton rubrum, and Sudanese. Microconidia. How would you collect the specimen for fungal culture and direct microscopy? Cleanse the affected area with 70% um, volume by volume alcohol. Collect the skin scales by scraping the surface of the margin of the lesion crusts. If we are taking crust, collect or by removal or part of the crust nearest to the healthy skin using sterile scissors and tweezers. For correction of nail pieces, collect by taking snipping of the infected part of the nail using sterile scissors or nail cutters. Hairs are collected by removing the dull broken hairs from the margin of the lesion using a sterile tweezers. So once the specimen is collected, it is placed on a piece of paper and it is folded like this. First uh, two folds and then cross folds, labeled and uh, date mentioned and sent to laboratory with a form, lab form. So the ringworm specimens are best transported in a paper packages to reduce humidity and multiplication of bacteria. Spores of ringworm fungi resist drying and remain, remain viable for several weeks when stored in a paper. The ringworm specimens are not very infectious, but hands should always be washed with soap and water after handling the specimen or use gloves. Direct microscopy. The material or spores taken, this is a common um, uh, diagnostic procedure which we perform in our uh, OPDs. The scraped material is first softened and cleared with a strong alkali such as 20 to 30 percent potassium hydroxide or KOH. The purpose of the alkali is to digest the keratin surrounding the fungi so that the hyphae and spores are clearly visible. As soon as the specimen has cleared, examine it microscopically using 10, 4, 10, and 40 objective. Usually, the hyphae are seen at the 40 magnification. Look for the branching hyphae, chains of angular or rounded arthrospores, or mixture of both. All specimens of ringworm fungi have a similar appearance. This is how these, these are arthrospores you can see here, and these are the septate hyphae you can see here, even here. These are the fresh uh, pictures taken by me, not from a book. These are the book picture showing the different septate hyphae. Now, um, how these uh, fungal infection on hairs would look like. This is an ectothix, a diagrammatic representation showing spores attached to the surface of the hair shaft. Endothrix, they are within the hair shaft. And favus, which are hyphae or air species are seen within the hair shaft. So ectothrix would look something like that, endothrix and favus. Now the culture. <clears throat> if identification, so till now we discussed those images which were um, from the direct microscopy. That is the scrapings are taken, dissolved in uh, 20 to 30% QH for five to 10 minutes and observed directly without staining under the microscope. And the second is to culture these uh, specimens. Identification of the infecting dermatophyte is required. It is necessary to culture the fungus on a medium that will encourage the hyphal growth and spore formation. Such medium should inhibit the growth of bacteria and saprophytic fungi. So sabrod agar is the medium which is recommended for identification of dermatophytes. It's a malt extract agar containing 
cyclohexamide and antibiotics such as chloramphenicol. Skin scales, crust, pieces of nail or hairs are used. Inoculate small pieces on surface of plate of the malt agar. Incubate at a temperature of 26 to 28 degrees centigrade for three to four weeks. Usually two weeks is sufficient. And for Canada, temperature is 37 degree and for one week. Plate cultures are recommended in preference to slope because more air is available, which helps the fungi to grow. The dermatophytes are aerobic organisms. Examination of ringworm culture. Identification of various species is made by first observing the type of growth on the culture medium and then by examine, examining microscopically a portion of the colony for spores and characteristic hyphae. Following features are used in the microscopic identification of ringworm fungi. That is the hyphal characteristic, that is spiral, pectinate, or antler, absence or presence of spores, micro and macroponidia, and morphology of spores. So now just remember that once we incubate the specimen collected in a subroad medium and for two to four weeks, we find colonies if uh, the specimen contain fungi. Just by looking at the morphology of those colonies, we can identify broadly the different groups of dermatophytes. But now from these colonies, Again, the scrapings are taken and observed under microscope. And now this is not direct microscopy. This is the microscopy from the culture specimen. And now, uh, not only, now the spatial characteristics of uh, that fungi, that is the hyphae and spores will be visible and will be in a better position to label or identify the individual fungi. Microsporum odoni colony, and the surface is white to tan with thin, sometimes silky growth. And on the reverse side of the petri dish, the colony is salmon pink to tan. So this is the microsporum colonies. If we take uh, the specimen from these colonies and observe under microscope, you will be able to see the microsporum or microconidia, or the macro, the microscope sporum showing the macroconidia, which are the spindle shaped and slightly tapering end, symmetrical rough surface and thick walls. There may be very large, measuring 40 to 120 into 7 to 230 micrometer in size, and there are up to up to 15 septas in these macroconidia. How, this is how they will look under a microscope, macroconidia, microspore. Now the trichophyton mentagrophyte colony, they are compact, heaped, folded colonies having gray, tan, or brown surface. This is how diagrammatically they would, the macroconidia would look like. The macroconidia will look like cylindrical. The one of microsporum was tapering, but this is cylindrical or club shape, a smooth surface. And in addition, there are small microconidia as well. These are the microconidia. Here you can see both the cylindrical shape, macroconidia and the small microconidia. So the trichophyton mentagrophyte produce both macro and microconidia. Trichophyton rubrum colony is white or cottony and reverse is dark brown. Trichophyton verucosum colony is very slow growing fungus and after two weeks of incubation at 26 degrees centigrade, white or gray waxy colonies, which are very barely visible. So trichophyton verucosum colonies are barely visible small colonies. Epidermophyton flocosum. These produce velvety colonies, which are flat and develop radial furrow folds. You can see these radial folds. The color is typically khaki or olive green. This is how the diagrammatically these would look like. Again, club shape or oval smooth surface, 
moderately thick, they are no macroconidia, unlike the trichophyton and tagrophyton. So these are club shaped, but no macroconidia, epidermophyton uh, colonies. Canida albicans produce these small, cottony white uh, circular growths. If we do histopathology of um, a fungi showing dermatophyte, then you will see these fungal hyphae or spores in stratum cornea. Another clue to the diagnosis is presence of neutrophils in the thick stratum cornea. We go for PS10 to highlight these hyphae. Same is the case with Tinea versicular, which produce spaghetti and meat meatball appearance with IP, as well as the budding yeast. This is the typical spaghetti and meatball appearance of Petriasis versicular. Candidal infection produce uh, pseudo hyphaes and budding yeasts on PS10. Serology. The serological tests are inappropriate for the diagnosis of superficial fungal infections. Now, I'm going to discuss the antifungal drugs, which is the second part of this lecture. So, the antifungal drugs are classified into different classes according to the mechanism of action. The drugs that affect the cell membrane integrity <clears throat> they include <clears throat> the polyenes and polyenes include amphotericin B deoxycholate, liposomal amphotericin B, amphotericin B lipid complex and histamine. Also include are azoles which include uh, ketoconazole, mycoconazole, protrimazole, fluconazole, variconazole and all the other azoles and allylamines which is tabernacle. Then the second class of antifungal drugs are those which are associated with loss of cell wall integrity. The drug in, in this category is echinocandins. Different type of echinocandins are available. These drugs are not very uh, popular and not very common. Then mitotic inhibitors are grisofulvin. Anti-metabolite is flucytosine. Then cyclopyrox, um, quinoline, quinoline derivative, which include iodoquinol and cliocinol, mostly used as topical preparation. Miscellaneous include potassium iodide and zinc pyrethyl. First of all is amphotericin B. Indications. The amphotericin B deoxycholate is FDA indicated for treating life-threatening or potentially life-threatening fungal infections like aspargillosis, cryptococcosis, blastomycosis, systemic candidiasis, coccidiomycosis, histoplasmosis, and mucormycosis. Amphotericin B deoxycholate is approved for treating the parasitic disease, American mucocutaneous leishmaniasis as well. Then liposomal amphotericin B, it is not readily available in Pakistan. It has FDA approval to treat systemic aspargillosis, candidiasis, cryptococcosis, and patient with renal function impairment, and patient refractory to uh, amphotericin B deoxycholate therapy. Then amphotericin B lipid complex is indicated in treating invasive mycosis in patient unable to tolerate amphotericin B deoxycholate. Amphotericin B or fungison. It is an amphoteric aqueous insolubility at neutral pH. It binds to fungal cell membrane sterol, ergosterol, and alters the cell, cell permeability selective to potassium and magnesium. The resistance may develop from altered sterol or decreased sterol. Pharmacokinetics, it is given as IV, topical with a half life of 24 hours. It is not absorbed from the gut and mostly metabolized. Some is excreted by kidney and does not readily pass the blood-brain barrier. So it has to be given by intravenous um, way or in liposomal preparation. So this is the normal um, uh, ergosterol, cell ergosterol of the cell membrane of fungi with a transport 
protein. So what is what it does? That the medicine does the polyenes. They uh, are bound, bounded to the ergosterol, and it will make it porous. And as a result of it, potassium and magnesium enter into the cell membrane and causes cell death. It is effective against candidiasis and all the other deep fungal infections. Uh, disperse in deoxycholate. Lipid formulations depend, depend upon the shape of particles. Embusome spheres has complex liposomal mixtures and other uh, amphotericin B preparations as well. So the, usually, the usual available form uh, which is uh, present in the country is the amphotericin B deoxycholate, which is available as 50 milligram in every vial. So usually it is given in slow intravenous infusion in 5% dextrose. First of all, a test dose is given, which comprise of 1 milligram of amphotericin B in 20 ml of dextrose for 20 minutes. If nothing happens, then the usual dose is started and is gradually built up to um, adult dose in range of 0.4 to 1.5 milligram per kilogram per day. Once the fungi is treated, then the maintenance dose is around 0.4 to 0.5 milligram per day. The toxicity of the drug is minimized if there is a gradual buildup from very low dose um, to the relatively higher dose. However, in seriously ill patient, a more rapid buildup to full dose is uh, necessary within one to two days. The untowards effect of amphotericin B include the hypersensitivity or anaphylactic reaction with hematological complications, fever, chill, headache, and nausea, thrombophilobitis, hemolytic anemia, and the most um, important and dreadful complication is renal toxicity. The severity is reduced with sodium loading, then hepatic damage and hypokalemia. Nistatin. Nistatin is another polyene antifungal. It is approved as oral, swish and, and solo suspension for the treatment of cutaneous mucocutaneous candidiasis and oral candidal infection. Topically, nistatin has approved for treating mucocutaneous and cutaneous infections with Canada species, most commonly Canada albicans. It is used topically and is given for GI use. Flu cytosine. Flu cytosine is anti-cancer and taken up by fungal by means of permease and it's converted to 5 fluorouracil by cytosine deaminases and incorporated into RNA. 5 FU eventually inhibit the thymidylate synthetase. It has attained approval as an adjunct antifungal agent in treating systemic canidal species fung infection or cryptococcus infection. Off-label flu cytosine is used in treating pediatric endocarditis caused by aspartams. Dose, it is orally absorbed but given intravenously also. Tablet contains 500 milligram and adult dose uh, being 150 milligram per kilogram per day. Lower doses are necessary in renal failure. It is important to monitor the serum levels aiming to achieve 40 to 60 milligram per liter and avoid toxic levels that which are above 120 milligram per liter. Pharmacokinetics of flu cytosine given orally. Half-life is half to three to six hours, penetrate into CNS, excreted in uni, urine by 80% unchanged. Untowards effects are nausea, vomiting, colitis, bone marrow suppression which is important, thrombocytopenia, alopecia, and decreased liver functions. Then comes the azoles. The azoles are some of the most commonly used antifungals. They interfere with an enzyme that is important for creating the fungal cell membrane. Because of this, the cell membrane becomes unstable and can leak, eventually leading to cell death. There are mainly two subgroups of azoles, imidazoles and triazoles. The imidazoles antifungal and the conditions they treat. Number one, ketoconazole, given to treat the infections of skin hair. Canada infection, 
of skin and mucous membrane, blastomycosis and histoplasmosis. Then clotrimazole and myconazole. Both are available in topical preparations. So triazole, the, the triazole, triazoles include fluconazole, uh, used in Canada in, uh, in systemic invasive infections, cryptococcosis, itraconazole, which is given in dermatophytes, onychomycosis, and deep fungal, posaconazoles have almost similar um, uh, range except they are, too, uh, they are not given in dermatophytes. Voriconazoles, again given for systemic fungal infections. So this is the mechanism of action of, um, mechanism of action of uh, these azoles. Here is the azoles. Azoles block this um, step that is conversion of lenosterol to ergosterol um, by blocking the demethylation that is 14 alpha demethylase and also inhibit the cytochrome activity. As a result of it, the cell membrane becomes weak, leaky and hence resulting in cell death. The alteration result by alteration of this demethylase and by enhanced removal of the drug from the fungal cell. Ketoconazoles, they are affecting, effective against dermatophyte, candida, petrasis versicolor, both in oral and topical form. Acid environment is need to dissolve the drug and does not uh, enter the CNS well. Metabolized and has half-life of three to six hours, mostly fetal excretion. Among the adverse effects, the important is headache, giddiness, Nausea, vomiting, and fluid retention. Hepatitis, which is the most dreadful complication and which has reduced the oral use of this drug, is hepatitis. Seen in 1 in 10,000, but not a very common, but it, still it is a dreadful complication. Allergic rash, hormone imbalance, gynecomasia, abnormal menses, and teratogenic. Inhibit drug metabolism. Absorption is reduced by H2 antihistamine and omeprazole and antacids. Itraconazole is commonly used antifungal. It is a triazole compound, dose is 100 milligram and may be given in a dose of 200 to 400 milligram per day, especially as pulse therapy for onychomycosis. In vaginal candidiasis, it is given in a single dose of 600 milligram per day and once, and in oropharyngeal candidiasis, it is given 100 to 200 milligram per day. For recalcitrant pitrasis versicular, a total dose of 1,000 milligram, that is 10 capsule is necessary, which may be given in divided doses. It is also useful in many deep fungal infections that include histoplasmosis, porotrichosis, aspargillosis, and blastomycosis. Pharmacokinetics. The drug has a variable absorption when given orally. It is metabolized with one active metabolite, approximately 30 hour half-life. Fecal and renal excretion after extensive metabolism. IV form is not available, is now available, but not available in Pakistan. Untowards effect. Nausea, vomiting, liver dysfunction. So periodic liver tests should be done. Hypokalemia, hypertriglycidemia, and drug-drug interaction similar to ketoconazole, but to a lesser degree, especially the H2 blockers. Then fluconazole, again a triazole and commonly used drug well absorbed orally, enters the CNS as well, available in intravenous form. Half-life is uh, from 25 to 30, 30 hours, excreted unchanged. Adverse effects are headache, nausea, vomiting, rash, alopecia, and rare liver. Uh, liver effects are rare. The drug is specially effective, can be given in uh, lactating mothers. No other antifungal is suitable for lactating women. How, and none of the antifungal can be given in pregnant women. This is the least uh, drug, drug which has least effect on the liver enzymes and used in many deep fungal infections. Quariconazole is a relatively new drug given in oral and IV form, um, available as 200 milligram capsules and similar to itraconazole in spectrum, little interaction with cytochrome P450. 
Quasa conazole. It is given for invasive candidal aspargillosis and zygomyces. Available orally, adverse effect include GI effect, dizziness, cardiac arrhythmias, and abnormal liver functions. Topical azoles are many. They include clotrimazole, myconazole, econazole, terconazole, and many others. Now the allylamines. Allylamines are fungicidal drugs, and the allylamine affect this pathway that is squalene to squalene 2 3 oxide conversion. And it inhibits the squalene 2 3 epox epoxidase. And as a result of this, the fungal cell membrane is um, leaky and um, ions enter into it and causes destruction of the fungal cell. The main drug belonging to this class of antifungal is terbenafine. And it is used orally for dermatophy, recently found to be affected against porotrichosis and chromoblastomycosis. It is metabolized and excreted in urine. Adverse, in fact, include hepatitis and rashes, but both are rare. Other allylamines include neftifene, amorolfine, and butanafine, which are mainly for topical use. Then echinocandin, the prototype is the caspofungin. It's a large cyclic compound, inhibit 1,3-beta-D glucan synthetase, which is required for the cell wall of fungi. It is specially used for aspargillosis and candidiasis. Adverse effects include fever, histamine release, and hypokalemia. Drug may act synergistically with amphotericin B and with azoles. Other echinocandin are myco, uh, mica fungin and endula fungin. Again, used for candidiasis. Drysofulvin. Once a very popular drug, but now it has lost its, um, uh, its uh, use. It's derived from penicillium species. It binds to microtubules comprising the spindles and inhibit mitosis, incorporated into keratin and protect newly formed skin. It is fungistatic and used only for the dermatophytes. Pharmacokinetics, used orally, not topically, dose 10 mg per kilogram per day. Micro size and ultra micro size preparation are used. Metabolized and renal excretion, half life 24 hours. Several weeks of therapy is indicated because of fungi static drug. Untoward effects include nausea and headache. Headache is one, was one of the commonest side effects which we used to encounter when we were giving the chrysophilin. Photosensitivity is another common side effect. It can precipitate intermittent porphyria and SLE. It is potentially teratogenic. Drug interaction with phenobarbital and cumarin and hypersensitivity. So headache and photosensitivity were the commonest side effects of grisofulvin with potential to aggravate intermittent porphyria and SLE and possible teratogen. Potassium iodide. The saturated solution that is 100 gram in 100 ml is a preferred treatment for lymphocutaneous sporotrichosis and subcutaneous zygomycosis. Administered orally starting with 0.6 ml in three times daily doses, gradually increasing to four to five times a dose in adults. The mode of action is obscure. Progress must be expected to be slow and treatment should be continued until four weeks after apparent cure. Best avoided in pregnancy because of risk of goiter and hypothyroidism in infants. Adverse reaction includes salivary and lacrimal gland swelling and hypersecretion, gastrointestinal disturbance, as well as anxiety, depression, and hypothyroidism. Other drugs which are mainly topically used include cyclopyroxamine, oly, uh, olamine, which block amino acid transport, penetrate wall, useful candida and dermatophyte, then hello, hello uh, progen, tall neftate for dermatophytes and undesylenic acid. All are used as topical preparations. So this comes to the end of this talk. I hope this talk was useful to you and see you next time with uh, part two of my lectures on uh, mycology. Thank you and have a good day.